Okay, so for our last proof for the kite, for the properties of a kite, we have, we have here. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then it has one diagonal that bisects the other diagonal. Okay, so we're given here kite C-O-M-P, okay, and we have here uh, point R at the middle. So there's a point R there at the middle at the intersection between the diagonal C-M and O-P. Okay, so we want to prove that C-M bisects OP and essentially that we have two congruent segments here so angle OR I'm sorry segment OR is congruent to segment PR or segment RP so we can write here on our first statement okay as with the usual it's a given so kite COMP or COMP is a kite Okay, so we can write that's a given and don't uh, be misleaded by the simple given guys because a kite has many properties and we can use those properties to use I mean to uh, support our claims or our arguments here for our statements so we can write here on statement number two okay so what are the properties of kites again guys so we can write here that CO and CP are congruent so this property of a kite comes in handy when you're proving the properties of kites themselves. So CO is congruent to CP and OM is congruent to PM. Okay, so that property is the adjacent sides, the pairs of adjacent sides of a kite are congruent. Okay. And then we can also say that CM is congruent to itself, okay, because our proof will be leading us to some of these triangles being congruent to each other. So we can say that CM, okay, for our third statement here, we can say here that line segment CM is congruent to itself or congruent to CM. And the main reason for that is reflexive property of congruence. Okay, so let's write our fourth statement. Okay, so what can be our fourth statement? So we know now that this side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, and the side that they share are also, of course, congruent to each other, or it's congruent to itself. So we have here one side, second side, and third side, and therefore we can say here for our fourth statement, okay, so let's write our fourth statement here triangles COM and CPM are congruent. So they, they are congruent using the SSS triangle congruence postulate. Okay, so you can see here the three sides are congruent to each other. And of course, what follows an SSS, an SAS, Okay, so an ASA and an AAS congruence postulate, so we can follow that with a CTCTC. But what specific part are we trying to target here? So we can try to look at, hmm, since we want to prove that OR is congruent to PR, then we, tr we should try to focus here on these two triangles, COR and CPR. Hmm, so we can say that we can say, okay, wait, wait. Okay, we can also say here for number five, since we've uh, yeah, said that the triangle COM and triangle CPM are congruent to each other, then if you look at here, guys, this angle here, so angle OCM can be congruent to angle PCM, okay, since they're uh, congruent to each other, the two triangles, then their corresponding angles must also be congruent to each other. So we can write here at number 5 angles um, OCM and PCM are congruent using CPCTC. Okay. And now we can say that triangles, okay, triangles, okay, we can see here on our uh, sixth statement, okay, triangles COR and CPR are congruent so how can we conclude that okay so hmm. okay okay so triangles cor and cp are congruent using the side angle side okay so let's type that number six sas triangle 
congruence postulate but before we can say this guys let's try to look at cr okay so line segment cr is being shared by both of these triangles cor and cpr so we can say before that we before we can say that cor is congruent to cpr we must first say here we can say here that cr is congruent to cr or rc and the reason for that will be the of course the ever used reflexive property of congruence property of congruence okay and this becomes our seventh statement okay triangles uh cor and cpr congruent sas triangle congruence postulate and then we can say now that or and op are congruent okay so we can now say okay or and op are congruent Okay, and that is again using CPCTC. So if OR and OP are congruent, therefore CM has bisected segment OP. The shorter diagonal has been bisected by this longer diagonal that we have here, which is CP. And there you go. We have now proven our, or we have finished our two column proof for this um, for this problem. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then it has one diagonal that bisects the other diagonal so let's try to go through some problems here involving kites so let's say we have here a kite frog okay so Jana is building a kite shaped garden in her front yard given the illustration on the left solve for uh, okay solve for the value of z okay, so we need to find the value of c z okay and angles o f r angles OFR, FOR, and GRF, okay? So, using, again, the properties of the kites, we can solve for the value of Z, okay? So, how can we do this? Okay, so, okay, so we, have, we have that property. But if you also notice, guys, we have this triangle here, okay? So, we have this triangle here at the, uh, what do you call this, on the lower left corner okay on the fur on the third quad quadrant so we have here angles OFR and angles GRF okay so again guys what is the angle sum measurement of a triangle what is the total angle sum measurement of a triangle so it's equal to 180 degrees okay and we have here uh, lucky for us we have here two angles we have here z plus 10 degrees and 4z degrees so we can equate okay we can equate this okay we can create an equation for this so we have here z plus 10 okay okay i'm sorry z plus 10 okay z plus 10 degrees plus 4z degrees okay so we still need another angle here the third angle and the third angle is most likely going to be 90 degrees so why is it 90 degrees again guys if you look back to the properties and also what we've proven uh using two column proofs so if we look back the the diagonals here meet at perpendicular uh perpendicularly that means we have here four right angles and also for this triangle here on the third quadrant or in the lower left uh, corner there must be also a 90 degree angle okay so let's write that 90 degree okay is equal to 180 degrees and therefore now we can solve for the value of z so this will give you 4z plus z is equal to 180 minus 10 minus 90 okay and this will give you 4z plus z is simply 5z okay 5z is equal to 180 minus uh 90 first okay so 180 minus 90 is equal to 90 minus 10 is equal to 80 and if we divide both sides by 5 we get that the value of z is equal to 80 divided by 5 Okay, so that will be simply 16. Okay, so the value of Z is equal to 16. And now we can solve for our angles. Okay, so we have here angle, okay, angle OFR. Okay, angle OFR is equal to Z plus 10. Okay, so that's simply 26 degrees. Okay, and angle GRF. Okay, angle GRF. 
the measurement of angle OFR is equal to 26 degrees. The measure of angle GRF is equal to 4 times 16. Okay, so 16 times 4 is simply equal to 64 degrees. Okay, so this is 64 degrees. And how about angle FOR? So the measurement of angle FOR is equal to 3Z uh, minus 6. So that's going to be mm -hmm, 16 times 3, 8 carry 1. Okay, 48 minus 6. And 48 minus 6 is just simply 42 degrees. Therefore, we have the three angle measurements here. Angle OFR is 26 degrees. Angle GRF is 64 degrees. And angle FOR is 42 degrees. So let's take a look at the second problem. So we have here Ina's flower garden. Okay, so we have here a kite that shape that is shaped uh, a, a flower garden that's shaped like a kite. So we have here kite ZPHT. Okay, and we have here four angles. So we're more on angles here, and we want to find the measurement of. Uh, we want to find the measurement of the four angles, and of course, first we need to find the values of A. Okay, we need to find the values of A and B. Okay, A and B. So how do we find the measurement of A and B? So we can see here, guys, that angle Z and angle H are opposite angles. And again, what are the what is one um, property of a kite? So one of their opposite angles are congruent. And it's most likely that the shorter diagonal, the one that passes through the shorter diagonal here, are the ones that are congruent. So we can say that 2a plus 7 is equal to 4a minus 25. And from here, it's uh, just simple algebra. Okay, so what we're going to do here is equal to 4a. Okay, then let's transfer 2a to the other side. So that'll give you 4a minus 2a is equal to 7. So since this is minus 25 or negative 25, this is going to be plus 25 on the other side. So 4a minus 2a is simply equal to 2a. And 25 plus 7 is simply equal to 32. Yeah, okay, so it's equal to 32. So let's divide that by 2. And therefore, the value of A again is equal to 16. So how do we solve for the measurement of B? Okay, before we get the measurement of B, guys, we first must find the measurement of the two angles here. So we have your angle Z and angle H. So this is going to be 2 times 16, okay, plus 7. And the other one for angle H, we have 4 times 16 minus 25. Okay, so this is going to be simply equal to, okay, both angles measure 39 degrees. Okay, so now that we got the measurement of the three angles here, we can now solve for the value of B. But solving for the value of B is a bit tricky because the angles that are supposed to be congruent are on the opposite sides. So we need to find another solution. Since quadrilateral ZPHT or kite ZPHT is a quadrilateral, therefore we can say that ZPHT, the sum of its angles, are, is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, so we can add the measurements of the four angles. So we have here angle Z plus angle P plus angle H plus, okay, I'm sorry, plus angle, plus angle H plus angle T is equal to 360 degrees. And now we know the value of Z is 39 and the value of H is equal to 39. Now we just need to uh, plug in the value of B, which is 8B minus 12. And also the value of T, which is 6B. Okay, and all of these are equal to 360 degrees. So let's solve. Okay, so this, this is going to be equal to 8B plus 6B. Okay, is equal to 360. Okay, minus 86. Oh, no, no. Minus, okay, minus 12. Oh, no, no. Plus 12. Okay, plus 12. And then minus and plus 24.